everyone, my name is Sarah. I'm here at the Sacramento Natural Food Co-op to talk to everybody about gin and tonic because today is National Gin and Tonic Day, which is really exciting. So um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about some of the gins we have to offer, some of the options for tonic, and some really cool combinations that you guys can put together so you can enjoy a nice, refreshing gin and tonic at home tonight. Um, so a traditional gin and tonic um, often starts with a London dry gin, um, and we have the Fords here, which is a really great classic representation of that, and a tonic water, which is kind of a bitter, sparkling water um, that has quinine in it, um, and sometimes a little bit of sugar to kind of balance out the bitterness of the quinine. Um, and it's a really simple cocktail, like one of the simplest ones you can make, where it's uh, anywhere from one to three parts gin and three parts of tonic. So if I'm making a tonic, gin and tonic at home, I usually do about two shots of gin or two ounces of gin um, and about four to five ounces of tonic water. Um, so let me tell you guys a little bit about some of the other really cool, special, interesting gins that we have here at the co-op. Um, one of my favorite ones is from uh, Falcon Spirits. This is a uh, cucumber-based gin um, that has a lot of lovely, beautiful botanicals. They use a kind of steaming method to release the aromas and flavors of the botanicals um, into their spirit before distillation. So it's really fresh and bright and um, you really pick up notes of the cucumbers and the special process that they use makes the botanicals really powerful but still delicate. Um, it's a really beautiful gin. Uh, we also have um, Bear Hill. This is from Vermont. Um, they finished this gin with honey which gives it a really lovely smooth uh, texture and mouthfeel and a little bit of sweetness from the honey and it really just marries beautifully with all the botanicals they use. This one has won so many awards and it kind of takes a gin and tonic to a whole nother level. Um, we also have St. George Spirits. This is a local one. Um, they use a lot of California native plants in their gin, um, like Bay Laurel. Um, they have a whole line of gins, but the Botanivore is the one we have right now, which is perfect for a gin and tonic because it uses a lot of like beautiful, fresh herbs. Um, it's delicate, but also versatile. Um, and if you're looking for something that kind of really hits that local mark, it's kind of a taste of California. It's a really beautiful one. Um, we also have two that are kind of limited edition right now. This lovely gin from Italy that uses um, the Elena gin, that uses a bunch of uh, wild foraged herbs and botanicals from the Italian Alps. Um, and then McKellar, which is a company you might be familiar with for making beer, has made this really cool gin that has hops in addition to traditional uh, gin botanicals like juniper and coriander. Um, we also have a really special gin from Japan that uses Japanese botanicals. Uh, Roku means six because they use six botanicals that are really special and unique and specific to Japan like sakura blossoms, yuzu, green tea, and more. And then for those of you who love the idea of celebrating Gin and Tonic Day, but maybe you don't want to partake in consuming alcoholic beverages, we also have a line of non-alcoholic uh, spirits from Seedlip. Um, these aren't using traditional gin botanicals necessarily, um, but they all have kind of a similar sort of a presentation to them as a lot of gins. Um, and so you can get like the citrus version, um, which is more citrus forward, the garden, which is more herbal, or the spice, which is more spice characteristics. And you can still enjoy a beautiful co mocktail um, with some beautiful sparkling water or tonic water um, and these really nice aromatized non-alcoholic spirits. Um, so for Gin and Tonic Day, I think I just really would love for you, for you guys to come down and pick out some beautiful gins, have fun with it, play with it. Um, pick some things that are maybe less traditional. You can use um, sparkling waters that have interesting flavors to them. If you want to play up um, some of the citrus notes in the gin, you can get one that's lime or grapefruit. Um, 
or whatever floats your boat, really just have fun with it. So I hope to see you guys down here at the co-op soon. Bye.